uh, it's me, Josh, uh, Josh Hunter, presently in the city of Santa Monica, California, and uh, there's something I've been thinking about, you know, there's an attitude that I've been noticing amongst people, and uh, I've been trying to figure out, like, what is this, where is this attitude coming from? Like, people are, like, so sure of, like, things, things being all right, and I don't mean, like, like physical things, people are like so sure that you know their 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 souls or whatever you would call a soul um, are definitely taken care of, and <laughs> trying to figure out like what what it what is it? And so this morning I was thinking, um, like I had this idea like what if because <laughs> our our our, t our reference for time is, is a little uh, or all right, I'm not gonna say that. I mean all right, all right hang on I said our reference because then I. Think as a society of people who live on the planet Earth, okay. Uh, all right, I'm referring specifically to Jesus, okay. So Jesus, he died, you know, 2,000 years ago, and uh, he said, okay, you know, I'm going to go to heaven or whatever, and then I'm going to come back. And in our modern society, we are assuming that he didn't come back <laughs> yet. We're assuming, oh, he hasn't come back yet. Like that's that's our assumption. Like as we go about our day-to-day -day lives. It's like, oh, if Jesus had come back, he would tell us. That's the assumption that we're making. Okay. He said he'd come back, but he didn't say, did he say when? <laughs> is, is what I'm wondering. Like, did he say when he would come back? And is it possible that Jesus came back? Like, what if Jesus came back in, like, the year, like, 1100 AD and just didn't tell anybody? Like, Jesus came back, like, he's like, all right, I was gone for, like, 800 years or something, and then I, now I'm back. And didn't tell anybody. And, you know, while he was here, like, maybe he got, like, too conf confident or something. And then, like, he died. <laughs> like, he just thought he was, like, the shit. And then, like, he died. And so, you know, Jesus came, he left, and he came back and died. And people are still, like, okay, Jesus is coming. He's, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna come back. He's, he's definitely going to come back. So this is my speculation. I don't have any evidence or any proof whatsoever. But um, my issue here is, um, you know, what if, because I haven't read the Bible, not in its entirety, and I haven't really studied it. So I'm wondering, like, did he say when he would come back? Is there, like, a specific time? You know, because, like, you know, when you are saying that you are God, the God of the entire universe, or that you are the equivalent of God in the entire universe and everything, I don't understand why you couldn't just set, like, a date. <laughs> just say, all right, I'm going to be back, you know, in 843 years from now, all right, so get your shit together, make sure by this point that you aren't an asshole anymore, <laughs> all right, but he didn't say, he said, I'll be back, but, but when, when, so, um, you know, and, and, <sighs> okay, so in, in, in thinking about that, He said that he's going to pay for your sins, all right? He said, you can make mistakes, you can do all this, and if you just focus upon me, or if you just fucking, you know, worship me, I'll pay for it. So this scenario that I'm thinking of, like where he left the earth, he went to heaven, he came back, but he, you know, it turns out like he wasn't like as awesome as he claimed to be, and then he died. So you've got countless people here thinking that there's a guy who's going to pay for their debts, their spiritual debts, their sins, and he is not going to. You've got people walking around thinking, you know, believing in, you know, Jesus and Christianity, thinking, oh, okay, if I make this mistake, I'll just turn it over to Jesus and he'll pay for it. And, like, I'm wondering, like, what if, like, so there's two scenarios, of, I mean, more than two scenarios, but there's, is he coming, <laughs> there's a scenario where he went to heaven, all right, there's, all right, let me, <laughs> okay, so my, my issue here is that we assume, a lot of the people who believe in Christianity assume that Jesus is going to pay for their sins, or he died for your sins, okay, and assuming that he's taking on the debts, and that the debts will continue to be paid, okay, but if there is something, if there was a mistranslation, or if something went wrong, and he's not actually going to pay for your debts, okay, so, all right, there's a scenario where he died, he went to heaven, but he's not coming back, and he's not paying for your sins. 
All right. Then there's the second scenario where he left, went to heaven or somewhere, <laughs> and then he came back, and then he died again, but but like really dead, and couldn't pay, and and, and isn't going to pay for your debts. And then there's the third scenario where he's died, he came back, he's alive, but maybe he changed his mind, and he just decided, you know what, I'm not going to pay for your debts. I mean, like, we're simply deciding, because there's this question that I, uh, this question that I, I, I ask myself and others sometimes, like, how do you know that God wouldn't lie to you? Okay, why, why wouldn't God, you know, the God of gods, you know, the, the supreme, the highest, the, the God who never errs and who is in control of everything, why would that God lie to you? Why wouldn't that God come to you and say, Oh, I cherish you. I really think that I love humanity. And you guys are so fucking great. I love you guys. Here's some gifts. Here's some gifts to prove that I love you. Oh, see, I gave you this. That means that I love you. You see this? Oh, you were about to get hurt. And then you didn't. That means that I love you. <laughs> is that what love is? When, you, when, when, when pain is ceased? When something stops pain? Is that what love is? When you get a good gift, are gifts the equivalent of love? So I'm saying, what if God, <clears throat> what if God lied, is what I'm saying. There's nothing, because if he's God, or if, there, if there's a being who is God, he's beholden to no one. Which means he can lie, or it or she can lie, however much that God wants to. And with, with impunity. You understand? God can lie as much as God wants to. And does not have to tell you the truth. God is not beholden to human beings. Even if they don't like it. <laughs> even if they're really upset. It's like, why did you lie to us, God? Because I'm fucking God. And I can do whatever the fuck I want. Okay, you have this image that God is always going to... Because even the Bible, like, he has wrath. He has anger. If he... <laughs> you know, this reminds me of... I'm not sure if you've ever seen the movie uh, Sphere. Uh, with the Dustin Hoffman. Like, they, they go underwater and they find this this thing or whatever and it, it, it it's communicating through him and it calls itself Jerry okay and so they're talking to it and they don't know what it is it's, it's talking to them through their computer and you know they're talking and then it, it's Jerry at some point says like oh I'm happy like you've made me happy and Dustin Hoffman's character like he gets a little you know suspicious you know he's like a little quiet and then he's like they're talking about each other because they're all like scientists and he says okay well Jerry's happy now what happens if Jerry gets mad? Okay, do you understand the concept of like opposing forces? Like if God can get angry, okay, then yes, God can also be happy. But then God can be sad. God can be all these things if, if, if there's at least the potential for these things. The potential for, for having many human emotions. So, this idea that God is just, you know, that the, or like the God that people are worshiping, you know, because yesterday this guy fucking comes up to me and he's like screaming, like he's screaming on, on Third Street Promenade, and I don't know what it is about Third Street, but people like love to fucking scream. Actually, generally in Santa Monica, for some reason, people just love to fucking scream. And he's being really loud, and I tell him, dude, you're being really loud. Just be quiet. All right, I didn't say be quiet, but I said, dude, you're being a little loud. That's what I said to him. And then he comes up to me, and he's like, I can be as loud as I want. This is a public space. And they always use that fucking excuse. Like, oh, it's a public it's a public space. I can do what I, whatever I want. It's a free country. I can do whatever I want. Like, that's, that's the, always the attitude. There's never, maybe once, but there's never, like, the attitude. <laughs> there's never the attitude, oh, uh, I should be quiet because it's the considerate and polite thing to do. I have never, I, there may be once or twice I have I've seen someone say this when I tell them to be quiet and their reaction is, oh, I should, okay, you're right, I didn't realize I was being loud. Because that's what I do. If someone comes up to me, says, excuse me, sir, you're being a little loud, I'll just acquiesce. I'll just say, okay, you're right, sorry, I didn't know I was being loud. And this guy, like, he's coming... He's like, he's like, what, what the fuck? You know, I'm preaching, man. I'm preaching, you know, people who care or whatever. He's like, what the fuck do you believe in? And I said, mathematics. <laughs> That's what I said. And so, 
when you're deciding what you need to believe in, you gotta, it's, it's gotta be true under various scenarios. And so far, you know, Christianity, to some people, has worked under the scenarios that are rele relevant to them. But if you come across a scenario where Christianity literally cannot work, then guess what? It's going to fall apart. Or at least it, you, you would not be able to use it anymore. And, and since our world is based... I mean, you can... You can literally find math in everything. In everything you do, in everything you say, in everything you think. There are numbers here. But if you... Nah. Anyway. So, um, I'm just saying this because I've been trying to identify this attitude. Like, people, like, they're sure and they're doing, like, wild things, assuming that they're not going to have to pay for it. That they're going to be, they're, like, they're doing these deeds, they're doing these things, and it's not, like... Because when you have a certain type of morals and ethics, you think, oh, this is right, this is wrong, and I shouldn't do this because it's wrong. But then when you have this attitude like, oh, I can do this, I know it's wrong, but Jesus is going to pay for it. Like, Jesus will absolve me of my sins. If you go into every situation thinking that Jesus is going to absolve you of all the things that you have done wrong, then that, pr that produces like a, a specific type of attitude that goes, and over time, that attitude becomes almost like a type of arrogance. And I know a thing or two about arrogance, let me tell you. <laughs> Alright, well, I mean, I used to. I don't know if I still do. Is that arrogance to say that I used to know about arrogance, but I don't anymore? I don't, I don't know. Probably. Probably. What are we looking at here? No. Alright. <clears throat> so. Uh, I just wanted... I mean, obviously I wanted to have this... I, I want to make sure that I remember this point of view. Because sometimes I have a thought like this, and I, I need to make sure that I... I need to make sure I remember. Um, but I just wanted to present this idea that maybe, basically, I just want you to think maybe Jesus isn't going to pay for my mistakes. And how should I live if Jesus isn't going to pay for my mistakes? Okay? I'm not saying he didn't exist. I'm not saying he didn't go to heaven. And I'm not saying that he's not God. But if there's a possibility that Jesus won't pay for your mistakes, how should you live? And I think if you live in that way, you might be a little more safe with regards to the future of yourself, the future of your soul, and the future to various things that are important to you. So, it's just something to consider. I'm not knocking Christianity, I'm just saying just in case, you should have a backup plan. I'm not even saying to go to another religion, just if you lived as if Jesus might not pay for, your, pay for all your sins, I mean, you might, I don't know, things might go a little better for you. Anyway. Uh, I'm 30, <coughs> I'm 33 years old, and I have the best grades on earth.